My name is Will. Um, I'm a, I've been a sports journalist for over 15 years now, but I suffered a bleed on the brain in March 2013, so six years ago now, and I'm still very much coming to terms with it even after six years. My name is Ronnie and I'm 63, 64 next month. I've lived here for about nearly 40 years and I'm a nurse. I've worked in all of, most of the hospitals around this area. I was diagnosed in 2007 having had um, issues with my, my walking and my right arm, my right leg. My right arm didn't swing and my right leg I was dragging, dragging my foot, which I thought I first thing I injured it, but apparently I was dragging it. Um, went to the GP and he did sort of numerous sort of psych um, neurological tests on me, decided that I'd got um, Parkinson's which I was sort of rather nonplussed. So sort of three boxes of tissues later and, um, and a few tears, etc. I kind of lived on the other side of town and I'd walk to work that way and just for some unknown reason I decided to drive and park across the road. It was so strange. Well, I was found fitting by, my, by the neighbour and then I'd, I'd never suffered a fit in my life but then they rang an ambulance the ambulance came out, found me and assessed me and found that I'd had a bleed on the brain. And then I was rushed straight away to French A Hospital, which I think is now called Southmead Hospital, and had an operation to remove a lot of the damage that was done. Placed into an induced coma to help my body recover. And then then went back to Gloucestershire Royal Hospital, because that's where I was living, to be close to home. And then was in Salisbury Hos Rehabilitation Hospital for nine months, learning all the basics, like walking and talking all, all over again. We've all got dopamine and that controls our nerves in our, in our spine and in our brain. We've all got about 100% initially. Unfortunately with Parkinson's we tend to sort of lose well, the, 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 great, the black cells, the substantia nigra, the black matter in the brain that produces um, dopamine, in my case has died off. So when by the time I'm showing any symptoms and I was diagnosed I probably lost about 20, uh, no, I was left with 20, I probably lost about 80% of the, the, the cells that make up, make the dopamine. And I'm now probably just running on empty now, just the tablets I take. They do say that you'll never get close to a full recovery. The closer you'll get is 90% back to kind of your old self. But in terms of the sort of logistics of my hospital stay, I was in induced coma for a month. Yeah, so in, around a month and then in some form of hospital for half a year mm. and, then, and then a year outside of hospital where I was full-time carer to get Will back because yeah we met on Valentine's Day 2012 and then had my brain injury March 2013 so it was just over a year and a couple of weeks we'd actually that she'd actually known me and then suddenly she was thrown thrust into this world of being my carer which is, you know, a lot of demands on a relationship. It's a strange thing that I've learned about brain injuries in particular is this phrase that says brain injuries don't just affect one person. <coughs> it's very true because obviously it meant Amy was um, living here in Paul and would often have to drive two hour drive to come and see me in hospital so it just shows the sort of knock on effect and then my family live in Leicester in these Midlands so if they ever wanted to come and visit there to travel two or three hours to drive down to come and see me in hospital so it just shows the ripple effects that brain injury can have. I think when I was at work because I had to go from theatre to I had to go walk through outpatients to the dining room for lunches and meals and drinks I wasn't aware that I was walking slower than normal and it was only when I started um, the dopamine tablets as opposed to the dopamine agonists that I suddenly sort of wow this is fantastic I was really motoring in my words I suppose and everybody said god what's she on I want some of that you know they all wanted the same so it was more obvious to other people who were used to seeing me well because they'd noticed me noticed me slowing down but weren't aware that I'd slowed down they just it was me so it was yeah, about a month before my bleed, so yeah, February 2013, I ran the Gloucester 10k, and that's the biggest kind of race I'd ever really done, so I was, I think, yeah, not trying to sound big but I was in reasonably good shape. The hardest thing for me was the recovery time, because your legs just hurt so much, and that's nothing to do with brain injury, that's just generally from running and 
and, and training for a marathon really so you've had to think about where you were training because Will can't remember it he had to think hard because he would get lost so yes. he literally had to just go to the beach and along the prom and back again because if he tried to do anything different he would just get lost yes I, I tried to get out and about my, my son will probably say that differently to me but he says he says I don't do these things but I do he's, he's what I call my tough love yeah, he does make me get out if I if he wants he, sometimes if he had come home and say right we'll go for a coffee we go the long way around to get my cup of coffee which in a way is good because he does make me he bullies me but obviously in a nice way um, I tend I got three three classes I go to with um, the University of the Third Age U3A which is predominantly for people who are retired um, I do a knitting and natter one, and I do a quiz one, and I do Scrabble. One of the big aspects of my brain injury recovery or brain injury journey is that I've definitely gone from a more pessimistic person into a more optimistic person, as in trying to find positives in every situation. So I went to the 2011 Rugby World Cup as part of my job in New Zealand, which was great, but I never the last World Cup in England was 1991 and it's so happened that the World Cup was then in this country in 2015 so I got to I went back to work in 2014 and I always had the 2015 Rugby World Cup in my head as like a goal or name as Amy says to, to strive for and luckily I got back to work and got to report at the 2015 Rugby World Cup and then a year later 2016 was the junior or under 20 rugby world cup in manchester so i got to report at that so during the course of my brain injury as i say talking about positives i've got married become a dad reported two world cups and ran a marathon if i if i go back to um when i was i used to go to the, the local parkinson's branch we we're all different and everybody you you we know we've all got Parkinson's, but we all we all act and sort of show it differently. I've heard from somebody. I think this was somebody with um, MS, and he called it the sort of the snowflake syndrome, or whatever you want to call it. Where basically, snow there's not one snowflake the same as another, which I think is amazing. In any case, that's quite incredible. And apparently, the same is with Parkinson's. We're all every one of us. Some will shake, some will have tremors, some won't. Some will be slow, some will be fast. We're all different. And it's, yeah, treating people as, as with, with respect and not making comments. I don't know if Oh yes, I think one, one Christmas I was doing a Christmas quiz for a sort of rugby club. And this lady in the, on the table next to me said, are you drunk? And I sort of looked at her and I said, no, actually I've got Parkinson's. She said, you haven't. I said, I think I'm fine. I have, actually. Um, and she shut up after that. So people don't actually think before they open their mouths. This is what's difficult about Will, is for Will, you can't see that he's had a brain injury. And that's what, I mean, overall brain injuries, they're often called an, an invisible injury because from the outside, many people, not just myself, many people, you would look at someone and say, they haven't had a brain injury or they're not going through a brain injury because you look kind of just like everybody else. And they often say, if you had a stick or if you're in a wheelchair, not that I'd wish that upon anybody, but it's a bit more obvious that there is an issue there and you can, people can make compensations, like they can let people pass. For example, like another hidden effect is the part of my brain that was damaged was the part of the brain that controls emotions. So you'll probably see or hear that I get quite teary or upset and I just literally can't help that. And I've met, <laughs> and I can't obviously control that. And it's that control or that filter that's been damaged that compared to everybody else has that control and filter over emotions. <coughs> Hello, my name's Louise Vazakli and I'm a physiotherapy lecturer here at Bournemouth University. And I'm also a physiotherapist who has treated people that have neurological problems.
So I think a lot of it is understanding symptoms. Ronnie is a very good case of that. She's a retired nurse, so she really clearly understands the symptoms and she also really understands how the medications work and the effects that they have. So that, that is one very key area. I think the other area for people that have um, a long-term condition is about keeping well and keeping fit. So all of us need to keep fit and all of us have a requirement to exercise regularly and that is just as important for people that have Parkinson's disease but we all do that in a very different way so what works for me is not going to work for you or is not going to work for Ronnie so it's about finding out the best way that you can keep active and keep fit um, sort of getting to know your own body um, getting to know when it's best to exercise so there might be a particular time for Ronnie when it's better to exercise yeah. and if Ronnie's got a lot of other things on during the day then it's more important for her to do those things go to the hairdresser meet a friend for coffee and then do exercising on another day because people do get very tired and fatigued so it's it's really about learning what works best for you so keeping fit is a key part of self-management I would say I would think so yes and obviously listening to people um, listening to the physios you, yourself I've always taken on board the advice you give when I've been up here and you've done our sessions um, so yeah yeah so we as physiotherapists would regularly review people that have Parkinson's disease, um, so we'd assess their symptoms, um, see if there are any new or different symptoms. We might do what we call outcome measures where we would time walking or time various activities, and that would be a good measurement to see if there's any, been any change. We would do that in collaboration with the person depending on what their lifestyle is and what their goals are, and then um, suggest a program of, of maintenance for them so that they can go away and work on it by themselves without relying upon us. We don't want people to rely upon us as physios. We're there to facilitate health and well-being so that they can learn to manage the long-term condition that they have. Mm -hmm. Back to that cliche phrase you used earlier of no two brains are the same. So therefore don't assume or treat two people the same. Every Every brain injury, every brain injury is individual.